Welcome to episode 100 of the Microsoft Cloud IT Pro podcast, recorded live on November 16th, 2018. This is a show about Office 365, Azure, and the IT Pro and end user side of life, where we discuss a topic or recent news related to Office 365 or Azure and how it relates to you as an IT Pro. I'm Scott. And I'm Ben. In this show, we discuss some of the most recent happenings in Office 365, including the GA of group based licensing and the air quotes, worldwide release of Microsoft Kazala, and how to track tasks in Microsoft Word. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Although I think you pronounced Kazala wrong. I think it's Kazala. Shazam! Or is it, <laughs> it Kaizala? It depends on who you ask. Uh, it's magic. Let's just go with that. Yes, that'll be fun. We had a lot of fun with that before we started recording. And we'll probably have even more fun with it while we record. Yeah, well, but, uh, you know, we're doing that right now, so we, we might as well yeah, get into it. Exactly. Well, congratulations on episode 100, too. Oh, yeah. We made that. it. We made it. I know. We're 100 episodes old. We were going to do something special, but that was too much work. So we're just going to do another normal episode. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is that. Yeah. We've, I don't know. It's been a long week, but it feels good. It's like 39, 40 degrees here or something. I left my office window open all that night. It is 60 degrees in my office, and it feels wonderful. Yeah, 41 this morning. It is officially winter in Florida. Hopefully it goes away soon. Like tomorrow. <laughs> no, I think it's supposed to be cool for like two days. Well, at least your sprinkler won't go off. Yes, I upgraded. I got the... Now it's another pronunciation. Is it Rock? I think it's Rocchio. Rocchio, Rocchio. Yeah, see? All these pronunciations. English is hard. Yeah, I got a smart sprinkler. So I installed it the other day. It's kind of nifty. I got an alert last night that we got over an inch of rain, so it's not going to sprinkle the yard. And it's actually below the temperature that I allow it to sprinkle anyway. So it'll be fun. My wife's in my house is going to attack me sometime because I keep making it smarter and smarter. (laughs) You're going to have to tell me how to do the temperature thing because I bought the same same one. I don't know how to make it do that, but you got more rain than I did. I find it funny, but mine is scheduled to go off, so... You're going to have to help me fix it. All right. I just want to, like, I need to install cameras now so I can see when people walk through the front yard and be like, sprinklers on. Oh, I started doing cameras. I mean, we could just turn this into a tech episode about all our smart home stuff. But I started doing Arlo cameras, or Arlo cues, which are okay. really nifty and pretty awesome. They've got a really fun ecosystem of stuff going on. So I got a couple of 1080p indoor cameras and you can do just USB powered like micro USB and just power them off a little wall ward. They also do cameras that are powered off PoE, which is awesome. Are those new? Are the PoE ones new? They are relatively new. They're a little bit more expensive than the regular Arlo Q. So there's like the Arlo Q just powered off the wart. And then there's the Arlo Q, which is powered PoE, which again is pretty nifty. And then the really nice thing about the Arlo's is they're not HomeKit compatible or anything like that, but they do do Alexa and, and all that kind of stuff. But they let you do uh, free recording for up to seven days. So if you're just looking to on board into a camera ecosystem and have 1080p recording, audio, motion detection, all that kind of stuff. And then they've got a pretty compelling offer if you go above more than five cameras or you're looking to do face detection or like people detection. So, you know, don't go off when the dog moves in his crate during the day. But, you know, if somebody breaks into the house and runs by, please record that. All right. I may have to check those out. I was looking, I think when I first looked at them, they didn't have the PoE one yet. And where I want to put cameras... I don't want to have to deal with a wall wart and I have a PoE switch already. So yeah. uh-huh. PoE yep. makes it way easier for me because I can run Cat5 and it's low voltage. So there's no code to adhere to. And yeah, darn it simpler. Skippy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Peshka and I'm one of the founders at Office365Mon.com. I worked at Microsoft for over 18 years, and one of the most common questions I got is, how do I know what's going on with the health of my Office 365 tenant? When there's a problem with your tenant, you need to know what's going on before your users. We help you understand not only when your tenant goes down, but how well it's performing. When you do have a problem, where do you start looking? Is it your network? Is it your tenant? Is it some feature inside of Office 365? Our network analysis features can pinpoint performance issues and help you figure out where those bottlenecks are. Sign up for a free 90-day trial today at office365mon.com. Stay in the know and stay in control with office365mon.com. All right. So now that we 
had our tight goodness. We have another conference coming up too. We submitted our slides the other day and I realized it's only like three weeks away we're going to be down in Orlando. Yeah, hopefully it's a little bit warmer. <laughs> this, this chilly weather has me really, uh, really bummed out. Yeah, well, Orlando usually is warmer. And I wouldn't mind this down there because I always got sweaty walking from Cabana Bay over to the conference. Be nice to be able to walk and not like show up for my session dripping in sweat. Uh, you, you know, the struggle is real. <laughs> it is. So yeah, if you're interested in joining us in Orlando, go check that out. Go use, we'll put codes in the show notes to save you 500 bucks off the registration. And we're not going to tell you whose is whose. <laughs> Try to figure out which mine is and use mine. Yeah, there we go. That's how it all works. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so now that we have that all out of the way, onto the news. Which news do you want to start with? Uh, well, you should probably do it in the order that you made me write it up in that intro. So let's start out okay. with the general availability of group-based licensing in Office 365, or maybe more specifically Azure AD. Yes, this is nice. And they had some nice announcements when they GA'd it. So... They GA'd it, everybody can use it now, but when they GA'd it, they also lowered the licensing requirements. So you used to have to have Azure AD Premium to do the group-based licensing. Now you only need to have Office 365, E3, A3, or Azure AD Basic. And I can't remember what the pricing is for Basic. The biggest one that I think a lot of people are going to take advantage of is if you have Office 365 E3, now you can use group-based licensing. You don't need to upgrade to Azure AD Premium. And again, it definitely makes it easier to license. One kind of side note is that it doesn't it doesn't give you dynamic groups. So you still can't do dynamic groups without Azure AD Premium. That's still going to be that AD Premium license. But if you have your static groups, your other essentially statically created groups in Azure AD, you can now set licenses for those groups. Yes, I think this is a big deal. <laughs> it's a really great piece of functionality if no one's ever taken a look at it because of the that licensing gate that was in front of it. I think that was a big governor that probably stopped people from thinking about it and, and how to go about it. And now you have the ability to do full-on group-based licensing. And, and I think if nobody's ever looked at it, it, it's easy to just say, well, you know, I want to be able to do more than assign maybe my E3 or my E5 or E1, F1, K1, whatever the heck it's called today. You know, all these different things. It's not just the overall SKU pack. You can do custom assignments in there as well and effectively build custom SKU packs. So you still have the ability to go in and say, you know, I'm going to do an E3, but we're not ready to roll out Sway yet, or we just don't want to roll that out. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off, and then we're going to target that into certain groups. So now it lets you do maybe a slow roll of services. So I'm going to roll people into the testing group, and the testing group is what hacks, has access to all the latest and greatest features and all the new things. So we can go do evangelism and training or whatever it happens to be along the way. There are some kind of caveats to, to some of this stuff, right? Because it is a effectively a, like a service worker running in the background. So, you know, when a user is brought into a group, when the license is actually applied, there's some timing things that go on there. Or when you remove a user from a group, how long does it take for the license to actually be stripped away from the user? So then it's again available for someone else. There's a little bit to kind of play around with there and just wrap your heads around. But they've gotten a lot better with not only the creation of of the license packs and everything else like that, they have some pretty rich auditing within the system as well. So you now you'll see things like license assignment errors. You'll have access to all of that telemetry that you need to have so you can understand what's going on within your tenancy. Yeah, this is a good one. And one other caveat is they still don't have anything in place or support with this with nested groups. Correct. Yes. Downside. They're thinking about it. What did you yes. tell me? Go upvote it on user voice. You might have to yeah. create the post for it. <laughs> exactly. Go user voice, vote, and once you get to like 10,000 votes, they'll think about it, start working on it. I don't know. It's Some of it baffles me. Like There's some user, vo user voice posts out there that they started working on it like two years ago, 
And it's like, okay, how hard can this be to work on it? It's been two years. I don't know. They do, I mean, they pay attention to it. I know they're using it for some features, but sometimes it still doesn't make sense. But yes, yeah. Well, another, it's a... Another topic mm, for another day. Yeah, yeah. we can talk about the, the way engineering works versus what customers look for. There's a lot going on there. But all yes. that to say that, hey, here's a feature and it's not necessarily new, but it may be new to you because you did not have access to it in the past if you didn't have that premium licensing. So now that's out and available. So if you think about the kind of wider technology base of some of the things that have been going on in Azure AD, it's been getting really good for some of these, what used to be premium features, coming back to regular tenancies. So things like the baseline security policies, right? Like let's make sure that MFA is enabled for global admins and service admins. Hey, that's all baked in and that's free. Now you get the group-based licensing stuff. So it is getting better over time and yeah. becoming more accessible. And I wonder, I have absolutely no proof of this whatsoever, but some of these preview features too, I wonder if sometimes they roll them out to like the Azure AD Premium, those subscribers first, just to almost limit the test audience. And then once they validate it, they get some feedback on it, they see how people are using it, they can kind of roll it into everybody by just downgrading the license required. I don't know, just speculation on my part. Another another ring versus just fast and insider <laughs> versus normal. Who knows? I no. can speculate conspiracy theory time. No, I mean, there, there's definitely governors in place, like I said, right? There's, there's little things to slow you down. <laughs> yep. When it comes to email, Outlook and Office 365 are fantastic. But sometimes there are things you'd like to do that aren't implemented. Sperry Software creates Outlook add-ins and Office 365 services that fill in these gaps. For instance, there are Outlook add-ins to automatically print emails and or attachments, save emails to PDF, send out recurring emails, or how about a warning when you're going to do a reply to all instead of a normal reply? Find these and many more email productivity solutions. Get started today by visiting www.sperrysoftware.com slash cloud IT. So that was a feature that was GA'd. How about another... <laughs> Another feature that was GA'd. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> no, I told you, remember, so before we started, I told Scott he had to explain this to me. Now he's making me explain it. <laughs> Kazala or Kazala or Kaizala is now rolling out worldwide, sort of. Worldwide meaning like everywhere except for the US. So there's an availability page. I tried to sign up for it because I need to understand. I don't understand. And I can't because I'm in the US. So if you are over in what well, it looks like a lot of South America, over in Africa, maybe some over in Asia, this is rolling out like everywhere except here in the US. And they have a pro version of it now too. So there used to just be a free version. Now there's a pro version. And to be fair, I still... I'm struggling to understand it. They have a demo site. They have a bunch of documentation around it. It's essentially another messaging app. So I know we were talking before, it's similar to like the the WhatsApp, the Vibers, some of those other chat-based messaging programs. I, don't, I thought we had like Teams and Skype and all of those for this. Now we just have another chat-based program. I've played with the free version a little bit. I don't find it useful at all. All my contacts that show up in there, I contact them by other means. I don't, again, not not being over in Asia, I know sometimes there's the whole firewall issues, especially if you're in China, some other things that maybe this helps to get around that, helps broaden up communication. There's stuff around, this can help your frontline workers. I don't know, frontline workers to me have Teams. I thought Teams was our new conversation channel. I don't know. There's a bunch of links that we can point to. You guys can go check it out for yourself. I don't understand. I'll be <laughs> honest. I don't see. I don't see the need for it. The reason for it. The point of it in the work I have done with clients over the last five or six years. Yeah, it's a. Mm, I've seen it described as a couple of different things. So if you look at regional availability today, it is certainly a product that is targeted at markets that you and I 
don't work in a, a whole lot, right? So Africa and LATAM and APAC. I think just kind of based on that, it, it shows you where they're going with things. I think the thing that confuses folks like you and I, or maybe other people who manage tenancies over in this side of the world, is you see these things come out and Microsoft pushes them and you're like, huh, I don't get it because we already have a bunch of chat apps. We have Teams and we have Skype and we have email and we have Yammer, don't we? And where's the right place to do work and, and what's the context for it? So anybody who's interested in this and, and if you're in an area where you're interested in the pro skew of it. So there's a there's a free skew which gets you just into the the mobile apps and then there's the pro skew which comes with all of the licensing that's associated with it and a a little bit more too so you get your user management group creation and these are the Kazala groups, Shazam, you know, whatever it happens to be, because <laughs> you can't play with it over here yet. Who knows if they're Office 365 groups or what the mechanism behind that is. But then it also has a bit of a developer landscape to it as well. So just like Teams has things like tabs or maybe a bot where you can embed some functionality within the workflow of a team, for a group within something like Kazala, you can do custom action cards. And so in addition to kind of polls and chats and all the other things in there, you can certainly bring some of the functionality that you might need to within your organization as well. So typically I think in this market, we think about a frontline worker as somebody who might sit and step in front of a kiosk and they need to get all the way into Word to do their job or they need to be in Excel or hit a hit Teams or a website or something else. But there is that whole segment of frontline workers who never touch a PC. They only touch mobile devices, right? Maybe they're running around in a warehouse. And if you've ever done any kind of like warehouse management or logistics, you know, there's people who never touch a computer. They punch in, they grab their device, and they're they're just going around shelf to shelf, or they're looking at availability of stock and you know they're scanning things and wouldn't it be great if when they scan something they could just have an app on their you know rugged mobile device that they open up and oh look at that you know we're out of stock on XYZ let me go chat with the manager for the warehouse rather than having to walk across you know a couple of football fields to get all the way back yeah i don't see and i thought all of that i thought that was kind of the point of licensing teams and all of that Maybe this uses less bandwidth because it's more geared at mobile and Teams is geared at everything. But like, because it has calls in it, so you could use it for phone calls, for messaging. Again, like you said, maybe a warehouse where the bandwidth isn't as great and this is a little bit more bandwidth, less bandwidth intensive. It'll be interesting to see where it goes, what happens to it. Another thing you do get too is when you sign up for the, it looks like it's the pro version because it ties into Office 365. You get like the whole management portal too, where you can manage those groups and users, organizational groups. One thing it does have that this is kind of a little bit of a Yammer overlap is you can do public groups Mm -hmm. where you can connect with like large sets of subscribers to send information. Maybe it's to partners, clients, people that are following you. And then, like you said, some of the actions, connectors, more of that developer stuff to bring other third party stuff in. It's interesting. Yeah, I haven't, you know, I'm not overly familiar with some of the compliance landscape for things like Teams, but because this is a new product, you know, it supports ISO 27001, SOC 2, HIPAA, GDPR, all that kind of stuff right out of the gate as well. So there might be some advantages to organizations thinking about kind of lifting workloads and coming up into the product that way. So at this time, it's available in what, like 28 or 29 markets, kind of specifically that are that are sitting out there. And then Microsoft has said that if you're licensed for it, you know, you can go ahead and enable it. And then it's going to be added into commercial plans just worldwide over time. So as they continue to find new regions, new markets where they think it's an appropriate workload, they'll go ahead and bring those over as well. Yeah, we'll see. See where it goes. Now you still don't get it, huh? I still don't get it. I mean, 
Yeah, I guess, I don't know. You didn't want another management portal or... (laughs) The jury is still out on that one. What I really think about it, right? I'm skeptical. Because again, we've played with it. I'm part of a few groups and I I found no use for it. But again, like you said, we're not in those regions. Yeah, I I left every single group I was a part of. They were all too much noise. They were kind of useless, right? There There was no tracking. There was no concept of sync my position across devices. And, you know, it was very maybe like Twitter-ish. So, you know, I treated it like trying to follow a timeline of things and it was very hard. You know, if somebody didn't message you or do something specific within there to let you let you know what was going on, just to, to keep up and understand with where am I and, and what am I supposed to be doing? But if you think about on-the-go mobile, let's directly embed digital business process. So whether that's forms or taking action cards to another level, right? Like let's do an assignment and maybe that assignment is driven by a task in, in another workload, but go ahead and just surface it up within you know this single application and drive it through. Maybe it's a little bit quicker. Yep. Who knows? All right, so more stuff that I do get, not more stuff I do get. Let's move on to something I do get. I have another rant too, <laughs> but we got we to gotta space those out. We don't want to exhaust people with our rants. Stream adds intelligent features for all Office 365 commercial users. So this is another one of those that it's not a new feature. It's been out for oh, quite a while now, maybe going on a year with Stream and Intelligence around like automatically coming up with a transcript of the the video that was recorded so it goes through and creates a whole text transcript does like some facial people recognition stuff it uses a whole bunch of ai in azure to really enhance your videos be able to help you find where certain people are talking in a video search the transcript for the video or just be able to read the transcript of the video while you're watching it They used to all be available only in Office 365 E5. At Ignite 20, was it at 2018 they announced it? It was right around that time, maybe a little after Ignite. This is now coming to all enterprise plans. So E1, E3, F1, A1, A3, Business Premium, Essentials, all of those are now going to get this video intelligence which again is really big. I did have some clients that actually considered E5 just for this. If they did a lot of videos, being able to like just search the transcript itself in these videos can be super helpful. So having this now, again, being an E5 for a while, now it's brought to everybody. If you're not using Stream, I really recommend go check it out, go put some videos in it. Look at some of these intelligence features. I've been really impressed with it. I like it. It's, it's fun to have more of that intelligence around your videos that you host up and stream. Yes, good functionality. I think one of the things that's a little bit of a blocker was if organizationally you've already deployed Office 365 video, you are quite literally going to be splitting the streams. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Well, but but I mean, you are. You're you're, you're going to have to go set up this other place. So now if you're invested in O365 video, do you post your videos to two places? Where do you make your users consume them out of? Do you just make them know that the old stuff is here, the new stuff is over here? And, And what does that look like? And I think that's one of the things Microsoft has been maybe a little too quiet about is thinking about ways to let customers know that there is going to be a transition path and that they're actively working on it and thinking really hard about it because it's just kind of silence on on that front for for what's going on. Because if you were heavily invested in that other ecosystem, it's hard to go to the other side. There, there's not a built-in migration path for you. Are you going to move all your video? You're going to have to redo all the groups and the tags and the security and, and potentially re-upload a bunch of stuff too. So it might be worth it, but is it really worth it <laughs> Right uh, to, to go ahead and get over there? Yeah, like you said, I'm still waiting to see what that path is because they're going to have to come up with one because I don't They've said video's going away because Stream is the new video platform. They're going to retire the video eventually. I have not seen a timeline for when. And like you said, I haven't seen a process for making that migration. They're getting closer. One of the big things that wasn't available yet was like a mobile app for Stream. You had a mobile app for video. You could watch videos mobile. 
I don't see it on the App Store yet. They did announce that it's coming. That was at Ignite that you're going to get that mobile app for stream. The feature gap between the two is almost nothing now in terms of stuff that was available for video that's not available in stream. We just really don't have a good migration path yet for it. Yeah, TBD. (laughs) Yes. Mover is a cloud migration company that specializes in moving your company's files from file servers or cloud storage like Box, Dropbox, and Google into Office 365. Their patented technology makes Mover the fastest OneDrive file migrator in the world. Moving dozens of terabytes of data a day is a breeze. Use Mover's free, industry-leading migration guides or ask for a managed migration and they'll take the lead. With Mover, all your data is secure and intact. Running completely behind the scenes, you don't lose time, money, or hair while you transfer. Scan, plan, migrate, report. Migrations that don't suck with Mover. Visit mover.io for more info. All right, so let's do one more real quick. And just because you made me write it in the intro, so we're going to have to talk about it. Let's talk about AI features in Word and to-do lists. I did not make you write that. I threw it in there. Yes. I think no, you, you chose made me, to write you, the You made intro. me write it. You held a... Uh, yeah, yeah. A no. virtual. Of, yeah. Yep. You, <laughs> you made were me, trying to be appropriate, weren't you? Yep. You made me do it. Yeah. My tongue is bleeding right now. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to talk about this one or do you want me to? Since apparently I made you talk about it. You should talk about it because the link that you put in goes to a 403 or forbidden. 403. I just found that out too. Maybe we'll have to go find a new link. Anyways, new AI features in Word. Well, yes, some of these are nice. You can start like at mentioning people and documents. So there were a couple different ones in here and I can't remember what all they are because the link is broken that I just tried to pull up. One of them was being able to like at mention people and essentially start a conversation within your Word document if it's stored in Office 365. So you can ask someone at mention, hey, Scott, can you go take a look at this? Can you put some information in here? And do the whole at mention to get feedback and have a conversation. The one of these I I don't get, and I don't I don't know why they do this. And if some integration comes with some other things, it would be great. But you can now have yet another to do list or a task list all within your Word document. So there is now a to do feature that automatically tracks where you left notes for yourself for others within your Word document. And you can then go through though that to-do list in Word to take care of those to-do notes you left for yourself in Word. Well, I get this from the perspective of you're working on a document. You don't want to get, you don't want to have your task list muddled up with a whole bunch of other stuff. It's yet another place to go look for tasks. So if People leave me a bunch of to-dos in a Word document and I don't think to go look at it. It's not like I get that to-do list surfaced in Microsoft To-Do or in Planner or in Project or in any one of the other plethora of to-do apps I have. It's just in Word and I have to go in Word and look at the to-do and all of that. So let me stop you real okay. quick. So you do get an email notification when people at mention you. And so it will be in your email. It just won't be in tasks or to do to do. But right. so you, you, could you could take that email flag and, it. And, and then flag it. But the other thing that it's doing, and I think if you look at some of the functionality they announced, they're trying to make it so maybe you don't actually have to go to the document itself to be able to contribute to the the, the process around it. So if you think about, uh, well, you're in consulting and you need to write an SOW. So maybe you're working, let's imagine that you know it's a nice big company and you've got your sales department and your project managers and technical pre-sales and all those kinds of things. So you're going to go and write maybe a proposal or a statement of work or, or something like that. So you're just getting ready to write your proposal and you go, all right, I need a graphic for our 
project performance for the past three months to demonstrate to you know the person who's going to read this on the other end that we're awesome and we always deliver our projects on time, under budget, all those kinds of things. So you just at tag somebody in there and you say, hey, I'm looking for the graphic for X. And they get that email. All they have to do is reply back with the image in the email. Just do it as an attachment or include it in line. And then part of the AI feature is is Microsoft will take that email that's coming back into the service and they'll parse it out and they'll put that image in the document automatically for you. So you, as as the person who received the task, you didn't actually have to go into Word. You just had a thing you had to do. You replied back just like you probably normally do. Like if you're a, you know an information worker who works out of email, you didn't have to leave the context of email. And the person on the other side who's writing that document or trying to put it all together and kind of munge it and get it to where it needs to be, they got exactly what they needed, the graphic or the chart or whatever it happened to be. Yeah, see, and that I get. I can see how that would be beneficial, but I don't want it, to me, I don't want it listed as another to-do feature. I think, so when I saw the headline of Microsoft Word as getting another to-do feature with AI, I'm like, another to-do list? Kind of like some of the other things, I wish they would market it a little bit better as not another to-do feature. I don't know how I'd come it off the top. Think about it as maybe a little bit more than to-do as suggestions. So Right. It's more like a feedback, document updates, all of that with email, not so much a to-do list in your Word document. Correct. It, it is very Google Docs-ish. So Google Docs has had this for a while now too, where you can do the same kind of thing where as you're writing these more long-form documents, it will try and dynamically parse it and figure out parts or pick out pieces where you might want to reach out to somebody else and ask for some help. So really that's what this is doing. It's the let's parse the document and figure Figure out where you might need help, kind of thing. And then when you do need help, it's letting you solicit that help from directly within the document. And for the person who you're asking for help, they never have to go and touch the document. Yeah, that part I totally get. I can see how that would be helpful. It will be interesting. I'm assuming then when you reply to the email, you can't put any other text in your reply. It can only be what you want inserted in that location. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to play around with it. I'm just kind of going off the the stuff that they announced on, on the Microsoft side, yeah. the way they, they said it's going to work. We could certainly try it out. You want to go buy me a Mac? I mean, it's in Office for Mac, beta testing now. Yeah, I know. Well, I was just going to say that that's probably why you don't hear a lot about it. People testing it out yet is this is one of those features that they rolled out to Office for Mac first. It's not available on Windows yet. So that, they say, is coming in the coming weeks. But yeah, as of November 7, November 8, almost a week ago now, you can test this out in Word for Mac only. (laughs) Yes, get on it. So yeah, again, I do like the AI. I like the reply to email. I just wish this wouldn't be termed as another task list or another to-do list because I am getting overwhelmed with to-do lists and keeping track of everything I have to do. But yeah, the AI features, the reply to email, that type of stuff. The app mentions letting people know via email, hey, I need your feedback on this. The collaboration aspect of this I do really like. Well, at least you're on board with part of it. I am. I'm just not on board with the marketing part of it. Maybe it's (laughs) because I'm not in marketing. We'll get you over the hump someday. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I think that about wraps us up for the day. I think that does do it. (laughs) Good rant. (laughs) Nice talking to you. Thanks, you too. And everybody listening to this the day it comes out, happy Thanksgiving. This is going to come out on Thanksgiving Day. So listen to Eat Your Turkey, listen to us rant about Office 365, and we'll talk to you next week. If you enjoyed the podcast, go leave us a five-star rating in iTunes. It helps to get the word out so more IT pros can learn about Office 365 and Azure. If you have any questions you want us to address on the show or feedback about the show, feel free to reach out via our website, Twitter, or Facebook. Thanks again for listening and have a great day.